Welcome back to Candy Adventures. I'm Chris. And I'm Elizabeth. And we live right back here in this 2006 North Star truck camper. And we just finished our first week at our new jobs. So we currently are working a work camping position, which means that we live in a campground in our camper. And then we also work through the uh, campground and get free rent and utilities. Which is pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> and today is our first day off. We have currently loaded down our cargo KBO Ranger for bear, uh, more specifically for trout. We've heard that our campground is not that far away from a river that might contain some rainbow trout, which we're super excited about. So I think we're gonna take our e-bikes and see if they can get us on some fish and we're gonna go enjoy the canyon. Ooh. Look at that, in this little creek up here in the mountains. And if we can't get on some fish, we're gonna go swim. Let's hop on these bikes. It is currently 95 degrees right now. <laughs> it's where we're kind of in the shade, sunglasses on, glistening with a uh, shimmer, shimmer sunscreen. I didn't know it was shimmer sunscreen, but there's glitter in this sunscreen. You uh, look which beautiful. Which is pretty awesome, thank you. Very vampire Edward-esque. Also, if you don't know about where <laughs> glitter's made and the conspiracy behind it, look up that documentary. That's pretty hilarious. It's not as simple <laughs> as you think. Typically, Mona comes on all of these adventures with us when we do these long rides and hiking and fishing because she does great off-leash and enjoys climbing and swimming and all that good stuff. Unfortunately, within our first week here, she has burned rubber on her own feet and torn up the pads, which I didn't know was a thing. Did not know. She's in here resting. AC's on high. She's got her own bed in here, so she's having she's a pretty living. awesome day. Yeah. It's a luxurious life in yeah. there. <laughs> If you hear that high-pitched noise there, that is my front brake dragging, which is probably going to affect the uh, ability of this thing to climb hills. What it is, is I believe the front brake is out of alignment, and I think the front fork might be bent on this bike. So that might be a little annoying to listen to. And they did offer that if the bike shop could fix it, that they would reimburse the cost. They did. It was just, uh, they did offer that. It's just the bike shop couldn't do anything. Everything was out of adjustment. The adjustment I tried previously, I thought I was just doing something wrong. There's only two bolts that can be adjusted and they're completely maxed out. And the, the disc brake is just riding like on the inside of the caliper. So something in there is warped. Something's not completely straight. The brakes look good. I, I think it's the, the fork itself. The box had a, uh, Big a hole in it, it when it was shipped and I think it was damaged during shipping. Um, so I'm not going to hold KBO to that because everything else about the bike is awesome. Hopefully the brakes don't ruin the audio on this. But as you can see down there in the canyon, that's where the river is and that's where we're trying to get to, to float and maybe catch a fish. This is actually my first time in this region of California. And as we were driving through it, you know, you can't help but think, wow, it's so cinematic. And then you realize almost everything that you see in movies is filmed in California, which is why it looks so cinematic. But it's so dry and warm and there's no rain and it is beautiful. Holy crap, the cliff. Absolutely terrifying. The other neat thing about today is that we are targeting rainbow trout. And where we're from, people will call them California trout. And that's because rainbow trout are actually native to California. So we are where their namesake is, where they're actually from, instead of being stocked or introduced, which is really cool and nerdy and fun. So we made it to the, the part of the river where we can, or the part of the canyon where we can access the river. It doesn't look that steep. So we're gonna see how close we can get off of the road down this trail to see if we can actually access it. And it's pretty awesome out here today because we have not passed another single person. So we're very happy about this. Our days off right now are in the middle of the week because we work in the, 
tourism industry, which we prefer to be off in the middle of the weekend. The benefit of that is showing itself here today. We have not seen or heard a single other person. So we're gonna see if we can go down this trail on these bikes and see how steep it gets. And if not, we can use the e-assist to help push them back out with no problem. So let's uh, dive on in. Uh. So far, so good. Oh my gosh. Uh, I have no background in mountain biking, so I'm not getting up on this thing, riding it down. It's already slipping underneath my hands, so I'd just be controlled sliding down. Okay, you just wanna keep limping like this, or? All right, we made it as far down as we can with the bikes. It uh, feels like 120 degrees outside of straight sun. So at least they're not on the main road. They're down here a little ways and hopefully as that sun goes down, they go in the shade so they don't overheat. So uh, now is the descent all the way down into that gorge. Looks delicious, looks inviting though. Looks pretty amazing. Yeah. When it's this hot and there's no breeze down here in this canyon, that looks like straight up an oasis in the middle of Garden of Eden. So I'm super excited. If we, even if we don't see a fish today, we brought snorkels and yeah. tubes. So we're gonna have a good time regardless. Pretty steep. They got some ropes left here, which is handy. Nice of someone. And somehow, every time we try not to, we always overpack. So we're both carrying two bags, water, camera gear, inflatable tubes, pump, fishing gear. It's never enough because you don't feel like you're ever prepared enough. It's funny, after living in Guam for three years, every time I see a rope on a trail, I think, oh, just like Guam. Like, Guam is the thing that I go back to is <laughs> starting this. But man, is it helpful. No problems. Woo! And I'm notoriously clumsy, so this makes this even more dangerous. So we've been down here for two seconds. Before we get swimming in here, of course I wanna stretch out our collapsible Eagle Claw rod, which has been our channel favorite now for over a year. $20, and this thing's awesome. We've caught more fish with this from striper to, to bass to crappie to trout, and I love it. We got a single hook spinner on here for these little trout. We're not gonna keep anything today. And see if we can at least get a bite. I see some in here, which is amazing. I've wanted to see California trout or rainbow trout in their native area my whole life. So this is already very exciting. We see some of various sizes from fry to some three inches or four inches, so. Oh, bumped it. Oh, bumped it. Oh, bumped it. Still learning all the trout rules and regulations in California. Since we've been here, I've called three phone numbers and went to like four emails, downloaded a PM, PDF, several websites. Um, trout fishing is a lot more complex over here because they have a lot of the, uh, they have a lot of steelhead. They're actually Pacific run steelhead and those are very closely uh, watched. And then the, you mix the salmon in, the coho, and the trout rules are not just they dump stock trout in and you can catch seven at a certain time of the year. It's much more complicated than that. Um, and they change the regulations every Tuesday and Friday. Yeah, and you have to call a number to see what's the most updated. So it is really confusing. So I'm not even going to attempt to keep anything today. Um, and we're, we're not going after uh, steelhead or salmon. These are all uh, little rambos up here. Oh, there we go. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. There we go. Are you kidding me? Second cast. Second cast on a little rainbow. Oh my gosh, are you kidding oh me? Look how pretty. Oh my gosh. Look how beautiful that fish is. Look how green is. that is. That is absolutely beautiful. Look at the colors on that guy. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, Holy look at crap, that. he's so pretty. I'm gonna make sure my hands are wet. I'm not gonna keep this fish single hook. Barely hooked him in the corner of his mouth. But That's look, so pretty. Look how pretty, and he's off the hook. He's gone. Look at the tigers, look at the stripes on him. Wow. Second cast. That's so exciting. Our motto here is rock bottom, <laughs> and that is not a rock bottom moment. Even if our bikes don't work on the way back or something crazy, truly a blessing, uh, truly a blessed experience right there. Been, I've been wanting to do that since I was a little kid. Your here, papa will be so happy. Yep, he just passed away about two months ago. And uh, when I was a little kid, he used to call him California trout. And uh, I didn't know what that meant for a long time. If I, I finally asked him, I didn't know they weren't native everywhere, but so excited about that. All right, Elizabeth's gonna give her shot at this. 
and see if one of these aggressive little mountain monsters want to uh, want to attack the line for her. It is hot. Can I just like wade over there? Yeah. I just want an excuse to get in the water because I'm really hot. And this water feels so good. The trout fishing I've done my whole life is about every other cast you're untang untangling your fly line or your spinner from a rhododendron. And uh, that gets really annoying. So to cat, oh my Woo! God. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. First cast. Oh my gosh. Work it a little bit. Stop, you're on TV. Oh my Let gosh. Let him pull a little. Look at him. Oh. Look at that. Look how oh pretty. Oh my gosh. Look how pretty. I can't even, can't even. I know, I know. Look my, how pretty. My hands. There we go. Look oh, how pretty. Look at that. So pretty. I never know what to do with the longer end of the rod here, other than the awkward curtsy. What a beautiful fish. You see that in the sun? Absolutely stunningly beautiful fish. It'd be a great eat size, eating size fish, but we're not keeping anything up here today. Nah. It's just super fun catching them. First cast, uh, no complaints. Now we catch more swim? I mean, I can't think of a better day. It was a little bit tragic with the bike uh, making loud sounds, but right back up. This is, this is awesome. I think we're gonna keep trying our luck in this hole until it stops becoming productive, but so far, two fish within three casts. Ooh, that's a big one. There he is, ooh. It's probably about like that. Whoa. So one of the first photographs of me ever was taken approximately 25 to 35 years ago when I was a child. Were you giving that big of a window? I'm giving a pretty big window. <laughs> and it's of me fishing here in California. There we go. It's, there we go. Woo! He's off. Unhooked he jumped himself. like a mahi. That's so exciting. But it's of me fishing uh, on the banks of somewhere. And I'm not sure where, but we'll insert the picture here if we can find it. And I've always wondered since I was a kid, you know, you know, what it's be like to come back and fish in California and kind of make things full circle. And here we are. Some 15 to 35 years later, here well, we are. That window got wider all of a sudden. It always does. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Look at Woo! that. Let nice me see. fish. Let Ooh, me see it. Holy Let shit. me see that it. That is a nice rainbow. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Come on, little eagle claw. Are oh, my gosh. Oh, you, my gosh. Are you kidding me? What is? No, it's a creek chub. Chris, that fish is huge. Or is it a rainbow? No, it's a creek chub. Look That's at that. That's huge, though. Look at that. In this little creek up here in the mountains. Look at that chub. What? Look at that. That thing is huge. On a little single hook spinner. That's crazy. Well, that was an unexpected monster. Yeah, just a uh, another species on the species list. I know we don't keep a species list, but it's always neat catching something you've never seen before or caught before. So you don't need a lot of money to do this stuff. Since I was a kid, Again, we won't be exact when that is, but <laughs> since I was a kid, trout fishing went from something, I don't know, it's kind of done the same thing coffee's done. Coffee and beer where everything got, you know, I love good coffee and good beer, but it got to be where everything's like, uh, kind of like wine. Everything got very high end and uh, expensive and then boutique, I guess is the best word for it. Yeah. And so now a lot of people won't go fly fishing because they think it's too expensive or trout fishing because it's too expensive. And um, other than the fishing license, you know, this rod is, this, this rod came with line and a reel for $20. You can pack it in your backpack. And this spinner was- Four maybe? Four dollars and I've had it for years. I mean, there's a, uh, if, especially if you're willing to go swimming for your spinners and uh, climb trees for your spinners, you can have them for years. You've got on some Ross shorts and some Ross Nikes. And a Foo Fighter shirt. 
Yeah. This one, even from the Foo Fighters concert, they were too expensive at the concert. So I bought them <laughs> afterwards. I saw one at Target that I liked. So this is not even from the Foo Fighters concert I went to. So. And I, your glasses are $17 off Amazon. Yeah, and they're polarized 17. Yeah. That's it. And our, the hat is our own brand. And my shoes are just running shoes that I will dry out and use to run tomorrow. Yeah. So. You don't need all the fancy no, gear. Everybody with the, you know, Orvis and all the stickers and it's just, it's made it kind of a, a pretentious hobby is something that it's turned into. And I, I hate seeing that from as a kid, it wasn't that, um, which is great. I, you know, more people getting the sport is absolutely better, but I hate for people to think that they have to have $1,500 worth of waders stuff. on yeah. and, you know, custom lures and all kinds of stuff. You stick. don't need these fancy no. $300 rods or anything. Going with the theme of you don't need to pay a lot of money to have fun, we have Walmart special inner tubes that we stole. <laughs> that we stole. North Carolina. <laughs> Thank you, Aunt Susie. <laughs> they made it all the way to California. And in this backpack, in addition to Chris's snorkel all the way from Guam, and his, is this from when you were in? Yeah, that, that's a CIF-issued item there that I've had for years. It's military it's the canteen. It's <laughs> the Ryobi pump. So here's its reappearance. Some more Ryobi shilling. We've shilled the fan and many other products. And I think the problem is every time you buy a Ryobi product, they give you a little booklet that says, we have 170 other products that work with the same battery that you already have. So here we are with the pump getting ready to to check these bike tires out and see if they're up to speed. Ryobi, I see you. Do you <laughs> see me? <laughs> it's a luxury of having an e-bike. You can bring some extra weight. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I wouldn't want to carry all of this, but if you have a bike, why not? That's why you called it the mule. is a boat and I'm not butthurt about it at all. <laughs> it still counts. That's a little chub. Oh, oh my gosh. These almost remind me of like a striper with their head shape. But they have um, bright orange fins like a brook trout. Yeah, you think it's a trout when you look at it in the water and then it's not. So I'm just gonna try this nonsense lure. It's a single hook artificial lure again. What this is, is a 357 Magnum shell. And I told you my grandfather called these California trout. Well, one of the things that I inherited from him, or what I did inherit from him, was his service revolver, which from back in the day on the Highway Patrol was a 357 Magnum. So I turned this old bullet that he had laying in a drawer, I don't know, for years. Uh, I shot it and then turned it into this nonsense lure. So let's see if this nonsense lure will do anything. If not, it's just fitting that it's going after California trout, even if it don't get any. And I know for a fact, because I just snorkeled this for 30 minutes in amazement, there's plenty of bigger fish in here, plenty of bigger uh, rainbow trout. Well, if I'm not camera woman in, then I'm snorkeling. Can't hear me tonight If you can't hear me tonight I've lost my way I'm so alone 
The sun is starting to go down behind that canyon and we're getting a little chilly willies and hungry. So I think we're gonna start our climb out. And because Mona couldn't come with us because her paws are hurt temporarily, Chris has promised her what she doesn't understand, a fun ride around the campground in her doggy cart. So we're gonna try to do that before the sun goes down too. Lizard. Hi buddy, what are you doing? Don't even care at all. <laughs> He's just soaking up the sun. Okie dokie. I'm glad we got e-bikes to help back up the rest of the way of this hill because it's very steep. Yeah. Also the temperature difference is already very apparent as soon as we got back into the sun. Probably a 20 degree temperature difference between where we're standing right now and down there one minute ago <laughs> all right let's see if uh, we can make it back up this super steep hill or if this is going to be a nightmare i think it's going to be okay i think it'll be fine even if it doesn't get you all the way it's helping you back up so i'm okay with that Because it won't give it power while the brakes are on. Yeah, I found that out with this one. You can't have the brakes on. on. A dirt bike, you can load up, you can hold the front brake and the rear brake, start it, make sure it's got power to the back wheel, and then slowly release the brake. Like, there's the noise. Because you don't know when it's going to give you power or not. Like right now, I just decided it's not going to. But in order to try, I have to let off the brakes, which means I can't be on it. That's the true torture chest, uh, true torture chest. Blazing sun. We overheated both the bikes. They both threw codes, um, but we made it back to the top and still easier than walking. So <laughs> elevated heart rate, but still better. Was that easier than walking? I think we found the culprit to our squeaking all day. As you see, this this tire doesn't want to spin and it just kind of stops and it's dragging the brake. And if you look on the forks here, you can just look at my fingers as measurement where you got a, a knuckle and a half on one side and on the other side you have about three quarters of a knuckle from the tire. So this side is much more room and this side is the side that has the disc brake. And you can see in here, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but you can see where the paint has kind of hairline fractured in here and on this side there is no hairline fractures or anywhere else on the bike the, the paint job is flawless so what i think is in shipping is that this had a force on it and bent and it more and it hairline the paint underneath it so i think the fork is is bent so these are her new booties because she's tearing off her paw pads from running so much so now we're protected just on the front. She's front wheel drive. And now she's ready to go. You good girl? Yeah. You new boot goofing? Yeah. Are you new boot goofing? You figuring them out? Oh, that's a new boot goof trot.
Mona had her bike ride, so that finishes out this very fun, adventurous e-bike day. It was a huge success with California trout fishing, swimming, and puppy rides. So we'll see you guys next time.